Yesterday, the stock market turned a blind eye to the chaotic and deadly scene unfolding on Capitol Hill. And it's a trend that appears to be continuing at uh, open today. Just take a look at the numbers now for the stock market. Uh, up just over 100 points right there. Um, and things seem to be looking good. Melissa Armo, uh, CEO and founder of the Stock Swoosh, joins us now to break down just how the latest political headlines are impacting the market. Um, Melissa, really nice to see you because often you're joining us on the phone. Um, the other thing to sort of factor in is that, you know, that joint session of Congress did wrap up in the wee hours of the morning uh, to one more step closer to um, the confirming um, Biden as the next president. The next thing is the inauguration. So just talk about the chaos that took place uh, in the Capitol yesterday. Were you surprised that investors sort of seem to be looking past it? Well, the market did sell off for a brief, brief period yesterday when they stormed the Capitol. It recovered. And obviously, we recovered a lot today from that. But there was a shakeup in the market from that yesterday. But the market really has been so bullish uh, recently just because of the fact the vaccine rolled out. And so the market just shrugged it off as if nothing ever happened. And today, I think the market is relieved that the Biden confirmation is over with. And now they're looking to see what exactly are the policies that the new administration is going to put forth tax-wise. Are corporate taxes going to go up? What is going to happen? We need more specifics from the new administration. So with the U.S. markets uh, seemingly unbothered by what's happened uh, in D.C., and I sort of think that, Melissa, that the market is always sort of forward thinking and factors in uh, many things that so often people don't think about that they probably the market uh, factored in that Joe Biden was going to be confirmed the next president of the United States. Uh, and as far as fundamentals are concerned, yes, we are uh, suffering through a, a really a bad dip in the economy because of COVID-19. But fundamentals for some companies remain fairly, fairly strong. Well, we're talking about fundamentals and companies, we're getting into earnings season. Earnings season begins next week. You're going to see bank earnings next week. JP Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, they report next week. So we'll, we'll see what they say, because remember, a lot of people have been behind in their bills due to the pandemic. They pushed off the mortgage foreclosures. They extended that to the end of uh, January for the federal government. And in New York, they extended that to May 1st. But I think it's very problematic for many of these states that are still shut down or 50 percent shut down if people cannot get back to work. I think it's great the vaccine is rolling out. I think that people are starting to take it. But in the end, you've seen shutdowns in the UK, you saw shutdowns in Japan. Hopefully the United States will not have to have another nationwide shutdown. That would be one thing that I would say would negatively affect these very bullish markets. The number one deciding factor for the markets in 2021 is going to be very similar to 2020. It's going to be COVID. So as great as earnings might be for some of the companies like big tech, you have Zoom. Target saw a huge rally yesterday. A Walmart is in an uptrend. Amazon, some of these companies have taken advantage of, unfortunately, the pandemic, and they've been selling, 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 selling like crazy, and the stocks have been rallying. But there's many other industries that are still suffering, and they need to recover. Airlines is one of them, travel, hospitality. And it remains to be seen, really, are we going to get back to normal in the next six months? Is it going to take into the fall of 2021? Or are we going to be in this situation for another 12 months? Because that, I think, would eventually... Uh, come to roost in these very bullish markets. So, as, as I pointed out, uh, Congress has now confirmed President-elect Joe Biden's win. The Democrats will uh, take control of the Senate with uh, the two runoff election wins in Georgia. Democrats have promised a robust stimulus. They wanted $2,000 checks for everyone. If they make good on their promise, what sort of ripple effect are, can we foresee, can we predict in the economy and the markets? Well, that's a good point. That could be another reason, really, why the market's rallying today, too. Usually, you have, when you have a divided Congress, though, it's better for markets because you don't see really a huge, massive impact or changes. And that's why I stated earlier, I think it's really important to find out what are going to be the implications of the possibility of tax uh, hikes with the Biden administration. The 2000 stimulus checks, I wish Congress would have passed that in 2020. I don't think $600 that they gave people is enough. That's barely 
uh, half of a rent for many, many people in the larger cities. And it really it was not enough. People are suffering right now. You had the unemployment claims out this morning, still around 700,000 plus claims week over week. These just numbers have got to go down. I've been saying this and we've talked about it before and I feel like I keep continuing to repeat myself, but people got to get back to work for, for several reasons. One, they need to be able to pay their bills. Two, it's not good for people to be inside their homes all the time. And three, it helps people's self-confidence to be able to do something and be productive and get out there. It helps people to motivate them to get out of bed in the morning. We're set up as, as social individuals. We need to get out and, and we can take the necessary precautions. We can wear the mask, we can social distance. I think it's important for people to get back to work. Melissa Armo, always great to have you. And I, the point that you make about the lockdowns, I mean, uh, the mask, wearing of masks, social distancing, washing your hands, um, those seem to have had a, a profound effect, even here in New York City, Manhattan specifically, where the numbers uh, have inched up a bit, uh, but they're nothing like what we saw back in March when there was a full lockdown uh, in effect. Um, you know, so, so your point about how the market is seeing it and what the, how the market could potentially react um, if they, if government um, and mayors decide to impose a lockdown is a really important one. So we thank you for uh, appearing here and, and offering your analysis. Thanks for having me. Stay safe, everyone. You too.